we're good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Close enough. Yes, thank you <laughs> for joining us at okay. the post-game press conference for the first round of the 2024 NCAA Sorry. Division I Women's Basketball Championships hosted at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. As a reminder, the open locker room portion for Oklahoma has begun and will run concurrently with the press conference and close at approximately 6.55. On the dais, we are joined by head coach Jenny Baranchek, freshman Sahara Williams, and junior Peyton Verholst. We will have coach give an opening statement and then take questions for the student athletes. Coach? Well, this was definitely a March Madness type of a game, and uh, we knew this was going to be quite a challenge. And I tell you what, they're such a good program. They're as good as advertised. We knew it. Um, and uh, pretty lucky to be on this side of this one. We will now take questions for the student athletes. If you're in the room, raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. Please state your name and affiliation. If you are joining us on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function and we will get to your questions. We'll go front row on the left. Um, Brian Henson with the Indianapolis Star. Um, for any of the three of you, if you could talk us through the defense of the, that final possession or series of possessions that FGCU had. <laughs> Briley, um, why don't you take that first? Say that again. We'll go student athletes first. Oh, gotcha. So, Briley, why don't you start us off? Sahara. Me? Oh, sorry. Sahara, start us off. Oh, um, we knew what they wanted to get. Um, offensively in those last few possessions. And so we were just like, no threes, no fouls, you know, play clean D and, you know, just, I don't know. We just knew what we had to do. And um, I think we just really gutted it out, stayed disciplined, um, executed, and we stayed together and played our game. Yeah, going off that, obviously in that last possession, we knew that they needed a three to put it into overtime and there was just enough time on the clock to get one shot off. We knew there was not going to be passes. So um, obviously that they got a pretty good look at three, but at the end of the day, um, they didn't go in, so we're happy, and um, we're going to learn from that. We'll go middle, second row. Hey, guys. Talia Goodman with the next hoops. Like Coach said, it's a very much March Madness game. What were the emotions just going through, especially in that fourth quarter there towards the end? Peyton, why don't you start? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we just kind of had to settle down a little bit once we came in, obviously. Um, once we walked in and started warming up, we still had the Indiana crowd from the last game. So I think it was just kind of amped up. Um, and it was really just settling in. They started off hot. And then I think we finally just gathered ourselves and got our feet underneath us. And um, after that, uh, I think it was just staying confident and staying um, present in what we were doing and what we had worked on this whole week. Sahara, anything to add? Um, yeah, piggybacking off what she said, I think really in that fourth quarter we stayed steady. I feel like in these kind of games it's really easy to go too high or too low, and I thought we just we stayed here, and I think that's, for, that's really good for us um, to be able to gut that out at the end. We'll go middle and second row. Nick Jenkinson, South Central on the end News Network. You guys combined uh, basically only missing two free throws between the two of you. So talk about how important that is in a game like this and how much is it emphasized coming into this game? Um, coming into this game, we've worked on it all, all practice, all week. Every day we work on free throws, knowing that um, not one of our, not a weakness, but something we really needed to get better at coming into March. And I think all, all of us, all 14 of us, has really um, taken hone on, honed in on that. And we really executed and we shot free throws. We were confident. We got to the line, which is something Jenny also has been talking about in practice. So, Peyton, anything to add? Yeah, I think. Um, it really just is a shout out to Sahara's game too and what she adds to us is that she can get to the free throw line because she attacks the basket and people can't really help but either foul or let her score. So um, that's something that's really important and valuable to our team this year. We'll go middle in the second row. Peyton, you mentioned before that you saw the lingering Indiana crowd before. Mm -hmm. Just what's the mindset heading into playing Indiana in front of this you know, filled assembly hall? Yeah, uh, I think even playing in the Big 12 has kind of set us up for games like this. Obviously, teams like Texas and Iowa State who have great home crowds. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we'd rather play in front of a crowd than no crowd. So even if they're not cheering for us, I'm happy to be playing in front of a crowd. Anything else in the room for the student athletes? Front row on the left. 
you guys get down, what, like 14 in the first quarter, what, what was the message, what was the energy like as you, you tried to find things out offensively, and what was the key to kind of turning things around and getting some of those shots to go down? Um, honestly, we've been down before, so I don't think we really got rattled by that. Way too comfortable is what she said. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I don't think we got down on ourselves. I think that really, like, it set a fire under us because, like, it's March. Nobody wants to go home. So I think we just we, – we, we, we stayed together. We played our game, and we, we did what we had to do. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the score, the Florida Gulf Coast led for 32 minutes of the game. And um, I feel like we talk a lot as a team, just you want to go on the last run towards the end of the game. And I feel like that's what we did. And we really closed out the game, obviously. Um, we want to start a little bit better going forward. But uh, I think finishing the games is really important in March. One last chance for questions on Zoom for the student athletes. All right, if there's nothing on Zoom, ladies, congratulations on advancing, job, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. The locker room will be open for approximately 25 more minutes for Oklahoma. All right, we will now take questions for head coach Jenny Baranchek. Raise your hand. We'll get you a mic and use the hand raise feature on Zoom, and we will get to you in the press conference. Front left. They mentioned being comfortable um, playing from behind. What does that look like for you as a coach? What do they look like? What's the energy like on the sideline? Not as comfortable. Um, but, no, I mean, honestly, I feel like, you know, it's, it's easy to say now, but we did. We needed to steady up. I mean, we were running around with our heads cut off a little bit, and that's kind of what they do. And so it took us a whole – I mean, you can practice as much as you want and try to prepare as much as you want for an offense like that, that everybody can shoot, everybody's driving really hard, um, but they don't always believe you in, in a practice, right, where it's, nope, they're going to shoot that. No, I promise they're going to shoot that. Nope, they're going to shoot that, right? And so that is something that I think it took us a whole quarter – to really adjust to. I thought the second quarter we actually settled in a little bit more defensively and just steadied up a little bit. I feel like, again, we were running out. We were doing all these things where we were playing hard, but we weren't necessarily just steady and able to read. Uh, and they're that good. They're going to knock those down when when you're running around or you pick the wrong person or you know you don't get their shooters in transition. So I felt like in the second quarter we did a much better job uh, I think in the first quarter, too, we, we, we passed it to them a lot. Their defense got us. So I don't even think it was just the offense that got us. I think the defensive part got us. So we had to settle in really on both ends. Uh, but they rattled us, no question, in that first quarter. We'll go back on the left or on the right. Hi, Coach. Uh, Britton Ross, OU Knightley. Peyton and Sahara touched on it a little bit, but the, the Indiana crowd today was really electric all game long. What do you expect out of them um, on Monday, and then how do you prepare for an environment like that? I mean, we barely were able to prepare for Florida Gulf Coast. We got to enjoy this one. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's exactly what Peyton said. You got to love it for the sport, and you got to expect it. You know, you, it's the NCAA tournament. This place, I'm guessing, is going to be sold out. And if it's not, then I hope people that aren't Indiana fans fill the rest of the seats that are open and come cheer for us, right? So, um, Honestly, I think that we're just going to have to be ready to go. You, this is part of the tournament is you've got to be able to go and you've got to be able to compete your best. Anything can happen at any moment. Um, but when you're on the road and it's a road game in the tournament with an environment like this, we've got to be ready. So we'll find out. We'll go second row on the left. Uh, Ty Golden with CNHI. Jenny, um, they list every single player on their roster as a shooter. Um, but you did force them to take more twos today than threes, which is unusual for Florida Gulf Coast. Their threes came in, in spurts. Even though they had some runs and they made you nervous, I mean, we're, how pleased were you with the defensive effort over all 40 minutes? Because you did take them at times out of their game, too. Uh, again, I think the second quarter was a little bit happier with us in terms of our help. I think they got us a couple, though, where we weren't in help in that second half, especially on some of the rolls from their ball screen actions. Um, but I do feel like, for the most part, I felt like we settled in and we adjusted much better after that first quarter. The first quarter, I don't think – and again, sometimes you can get as mad as you want as a coach – but you also, the best experience, the best teacher that we have is, is the experience, right? It's actually getting out there and you have a feel for the game. And so that's something that we really want to be able to do. 
Um, I'd like us to feel some things a little bit earlier. Uh, but I, I felt like more so than not, offensively, we weren't great. We had some moments where you could see our pace, you could see our movement, uh, but I feel like our cutting and our, our offensive flow wasn't, wasn't great. And so you got to credit them for that, and we've got to get better before Monday. Anything else in the room for Coach? We'll give yep. front on the left. Yeah, just in terms of your history with Ter Coach uh, Morin, um, mm -hmm. you guys r run into each other at, at Drake, and, and mm -hmm. what's your kind of history, how, how well you know her, just kind of mm -hmm. curious as to how, how well you guys knew each other from your time in the yeah. same conference. Um, you know what? I, I, lo I love Terry. I think she is so great. I think what she's been able to do, I think she's classy. I think she has integrity. Um, I think she's a good person. She has humility, I think. Uh, you know, her teams are always really tough, which is obviously an indicator of who she is. Uh, she's a great teacher of the game. Um, you don't want to play against her because you like her. She's easy to cheer for. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we have obviously history in the Valley. And there's some, you know, that's also my background. That's also with talking about Florida Gulf Coast. I know how good they are. You know, I, I understand that. I understand getting a seed that sometimes you feel like maybe you could get a little higher one, right? And that goes back to those days that we um, we were in the Valley together, and then I've watched her really build this program, and it's pretty spectacular. So I have a lot of respect for her. We'll now move to Zoom. Eric Bailey, go ahead. Danny, congratulations. I wanted to ask you about two big plays in the fourth quarter, just or two big players, basically. Aubrey we only had five mm -hmm. points, but all five came at critical, critical moments. And then can you talk me through Peyton's uh, last basket that gave you the 72-70 lead? Yeah, I thought Aubrey gave us some great energy. And especially after you miss one, to be able to take that second one, I think is always huge. So, And then I, I felt like probably her biggest play was the offensive rebound. So uh, Aubrey continues to... You know, she's had such an interesting year where she's, you know, she's she's really been great for us. Um, and then she's kind of been a little bit um, where maybe she hasn't had as much time on the floor. But you can really start to see what she's doing is coming back. Whether or not the ball goes in the hole, that's irrelevant. I know I shouldn't say that as a coach, but uh, you can just see her bounce and she just provides such a spark for us. Uh, so that was really exciting, I feel like, for her. Uh, and And Peyton, I feel like, you know, you got to see Peyton today think almost too much like a point guard where she was really trying to set some things up for everybody. And then I think at the end of the game, she took exactly what she needed to uh, when she needed to do that. Eric, go ahead again. Any more questions? Sorry, I didn't know. Okay, let me ask you one more about one more player. Yeah. Of course, we haven't asked you about Skyler yet in Skyler's game today. Um, you know, Sky, I felt like, uh, again, I thought, I thought that was one of Skylar's better defensive games and to really have to come out because she hasn't, she hasn't done that. She's really had to battle on the interior. So for her to be able to make that adjustment, I thought was good. I didn't say great, but I did say good. Um, and, and Sky is also one that, um, you know, she's a unique player because she's, she can score at different levels. She's a little unassuming. But I also feel like some of her rebounds were pretty big today, too. So I know her line is obviously OK, as I'm looking at it, not necessarily her rebounding. Um, but I also know that, um, gosh, there's such high expectation for Skylar. And sometimes it's probably not fair. And I'm really hard on her as a coach. Um, but she just has it. She just has that it factor that she can kind of forget something and then just go right to the next thing. So I don't necessarily know if today was her best day, um, but I know she's a real special player. We'll take one last one in the middle here. Andrew, Nick. Hey, Coach. Nick Jenkinson, South Central Indiana News Network. You guys... Oklahoma and I, you both played down in Fort Myers in November. Of course, you didn't get to play each other. Did you watch any of IU's games kind of knowing that maybe there was a chance you'd see them down the road? No. In fact, I don't even know if we actually showed up in Fort Myers when we played. Um, but, um, no, I, I didn't. And you don't even really start 
to you know think about all of that, or at least I don't. I'm pretty focused on what's in the here and now. But I, I know that they're really good. I know that they've had obviously great tradition, um, and and you know a lot of their players. So great, Coach. Thanks. Congratulations on the victory, thank and we you. will see you tomorrow. You guys, thank you, and thank you for covering women's basketball. Appreciate it, Boomer. Florida golf coach should be in shortly.